be from the outside looking in a pretty successful weekend for a lot of guys. I think so too. I, I look at it. I think there's a lot more positives than negatives. You know, when you have between the attached and the unattached guys, like 26, 27 guys, you're going to, you know, you're not going to have 27 raving reviews, but I think there was a lot more positives than negatives. I really did starting out, especially, you know, and, and probably a little different start than we've had before too, because you throw in Nebraska, had a lot of their starters there. And you and I practically had their whole starting team there. South Dakota State had a lot of starters there. So you, you don't, you know, it's not like jumping into a D2 or a D3. And I'm not saying that disrespectfully, but you know, it is what it is. Absolutely. Jared Dagan got back on the mat. Um, how did he look? Um, and obviously won the title, so probably pretty good. I think I probably need to ask you guys what he, how he looked. I think, you know, I thought he looked, showed some, some old form that uh, we saw a couple years ago, and I think it just shows you probably how beat up, banged up Jared Dagan was last year and even, you know, the year before a little bit. I mean, the year that he all american he had a torn labrum and uh, did some pretty amazing things. So he's really healthy right now, and, you know, I think he's just going to keep growing. And then David Carr's another guy who won a, a title out there. Um, one in sudden victory against Peyton Robin, pretty good wrestler. Um, what did you see from him in that grit, especially in that final match, to pull out a match from sudden victory? Well, I thought it was really good. I thought there was a lot of grit there. Um, you know, everybody's going to come gunning for David this year, and I think he realizes that. Everybody's going to be excited to wrestle him. I mean, if you understand our sport really well, it was the first weigh-in we've had. It was the first time David's been down to that weight. David got big and strong this summer. Um, probably could have went 65, but decided he wanted to make the cut to, to 57. So I knew he'd feel it, you know, and, and that guy had had two or three weigh-ins under his belt, was, was down to that weight and used to that weight a little bit more. So, you know, and I still think we won because of toughness at the end. I think we out-toughed him. I mean, you're down five to two with 45 seconds to go and you, you suck it up and tie it and then you go out and win it right away. I think that's a testament to the, the little stuff David does with uh, just how hard he pushes himself. You know, he's a leader in the wrestling room, but we do a lot of work on the track too, and he's, he's proved to be a leader on the track. And then why didn't Ian Parker um, he, wrestle? Ian's just a little bit banged up. We're, we're gonna weigh him in this weekend, see how he feels. Nothing major, and uh, at this time of year is the time of year to be cautious. and. We're going to be cautious, so uh, you know all good stuff coming forward. What are you hoping to see from your guys this weekend, both in the dual meets, then you have the cyclone open as well? Well, we're going to wrestle, you know, some guys in one and some guys in the other. Uh, we'll have a starting lineup that'll probably come out tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow after we get done with our workout, we're going to have a mat workout Wednesday morning. So we'll kind of come up with a starting lineup, and then um, we'll wrestle. You know, just about everybody that we got healthy. Well, everybody that we've got healthy will wrestle this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. So. Um, I don't expect a big tournament on Sunday, but you know it's going to be matches, and that's what we need this time of year. What are you expecting from 65 this weekend and in the future? I think we have to have some guys step up, and I really saw that this weekend, especially at 74. Well, you're really everywhere. I mean, I felt like we stepped up. 65 is a race right now. we got a bunch of guys that could compete at 65, but they've all had success already. Um, you know, I thought 74 with... Um, Shapiro Devine was really good. I think he was right in there with the top level guy in the nation in the finals. I think we saw some really good things out of Coleman. I think we saw some good things out of Younger. And I think we saw some good things out of heavyweights. So we just have to keep improving at those weights. If we do that, I think we could have a really good upper weight category there. You go ahead, Tom. Oh, California Baptist, uh, some people may not have heard of it, but they've actually had a very good wrestling program been building for a long time. Um, uh, do you, Lenny's the coach there. Do you, did you know him? How did you get yeah, Lenny, those guys? Yeah, Lenny Zaleski is the head coach at Cal Baptist and was a teammate of mine at Iowa way back in the day and have a lot of respect for Lenny. Um, Cal Baptist will join the Big 12 next year, not this year, as an affiliate member. So, um, you know, it's one of the few colleges, Division One colleges in, in California that's, that supported wrestling. And so I think it just was a great opportunity when they were looking for a place to land, um, especially when Fresno fell out. I think they were a natural addition. So we're excited to have them, and he'll bring some scrappy guys. Um, I mean, I think they, they come in, they know they're the underdog, but they're going to have a lot to prove. And anytime you got a lot to prove, you got to be leery and weary. And so I'm excited to see Lenny again. But... I know he's excited to get into Big 12. Okay, and then Army, uh, you know, when you were out east, I'm sure you ran into Navy and Army a lot. We'd see both of those at uh, Vegas, but 
when you say the academies are a perfect place for the sport of wrestling, the mentality and everything seems to line up good, which explains why they're always competitive. Absolutely, you know, and you get those mil that military flavor to it. These guys are going to be number one; they're going to be tough, and number two, they're going to be in shape. So it's a great way, a great test for us to start out. I know they've had a couple weigh-ins and already wrestled a couple dual meets. So that's a big advantage. We need to feel good off the scale, uh, throw out all the records and all the accolades from last year. I always say in the beginning of the year, especially the first or second weekend, it's about the guys that have done the weight cut right, the preparation right, because in a one hour weigh-in, you can't fake it. You can't fake, you can't fake the weight cut. You can't fake what you've done up to that point. I was going to ask, uh, who would you say really stood out to you this past weekend outside of, you know, Diggin and Carr and the Coleman's, you know, the, your upperclassmen? Um, I don't know. I think if you call Kyson Terakina and um, Zach Redding upperclassmen, even though they're considered in the NCAA's eyes as true freshmen, but we obviously got to see a glimpse of those guys last year. So I think those guys and, you know, I think our, our flying Hawaiians at 125 <laughs> have done pretty well. So we got, uh, we got Hawaii covered here at Iowa State. Absolutely.